name is Oliver Roig, and the talk is named OSM Matrix Grid Based Analysis and Visualization of OpenStreetMap. Well, thanks for the intro, um, which is called the, the OSM matrix. And as the subtitle says, it, uh, it's about grid-based analysis and visualization of OpenStreetMap. Um, well, what is about in detail? It's certainly a lot about these guys. Um, well, um, not very surprisingly, it's about OpenStreetMap. And uh, what we're trying to do is to visualize uh, OpenStreetMap data in another way. So. We are not uh, visualizing uh, the street network or buildings or point of interest. So we are trying to uh, visualize data that is more or less hidden within OpenStreetMap. And we want to learn about the uh, user behavior of the, the mappers or um, the topicality of data. And we want to infer some information on the data quality, for instance. Um, there already have been some other approaches, namely uh, one from Martin van Exel. Um, he was uh, trying to visualize uh, uh, version numbers of uh, OSM features um, using contour lines. And another similar approach uh, by uh, some guys from uh, Münster University, namely Johannes Drame and Carsten Kessler, uh, who were um, <coughs> using heat maps for visualizing the version numbers of um, point of interest. And yeah, as you can see, it works pretty good. But um, our approach is a little bit different. So um, since these two approaches mainly focus on uh, only one uh, type of attribute, namely the uh, um, version number, uh, we were uh, trying to uh, visualize a different uh, uh, a set of different uh, attributes. So we uh, calculated uh, the version numbers, uh, number of contributing uh, contributions per user, or the number of attributes, and uh, average, minimum, and maximum values. We uh, calculated the sums of the attributes, features, and contributing users, and for uh, the areas for buildings or land use, such as uh, um, commercial, uh, farmland and industrial. Uh, these three dots here indicate that there's a lot more plants, so that's what we have right now. <coughs> so how does it exactly work? Um, first off, we uh, divided the area of Europe, uh, except for Russia and Turkey, I guess, um, into uh, a set of these uh, hexagonal cells. And we took the uh, planet file from OSM, and for each of these cells, we calculated the uh, uh, values I mentioned before. Um, the calculation was done using uh, the GeoTools library, <coughs> and we uh, saved or we posted the, the calculated values along with the geometries and uh, a timestamp for each attribute um, into a PostGIS database. So that's it for the processing part. And uh, on the other side, we were trying to visualize the data. So we uh, attached or we linked the PostGIS database uh, to a geo server. And um, on top, we built a client uh, based on open layers, which looks like this at the moment. So it's a very easy to use and basic interface. We have uh, a map which uh, visualize or displays the attribute. Here you can see the number of contributing users per cell. Um, we have some uh, feature info you can uh, uh, using the get feature info uh, tool. So by just clicking at one of these cells, a legend and some uh, tools, uh, uh, um, a geocoding service with the service which is based on the nominatum <coughs> service, and uh, here we applied the uh, W3C geolocation API. So you can easily. Uh, jump to the place you're lo located at right now. So um, we also have some uh, first results to present. Um, 
which I'm going to talk about right now. So um, first, uh, we have a little, uh, I'm going to show an overview of uh, uh, Middle Europe, and then we dive into some single uh, countries to we, we may look further at. So this is uh, the number of contributing users, and we can already see that there's uh, different user activities in uh, different countries of Europe. In Germany, for instance, we see in the uh, uh, urban areas here in Berlin or in the in the west that there are a lot of uh, users contributing uh, compared to let's say uh, France or Italy um, we have uh, very active uh, so very high numbers and that may indicate a um, very active uh, community um, the average number of contributions per user is also interesting since we uh, in Germany, we have a similar image as we've seen before. But uh, for instance, in the Netherlands, uh, you can see that there's uh, a lot of activity per user. And in France, for instance, we have, uh, again, very low numbers. But uh, there are some areas with uh, higher numbers, which uh, we don't know uh, yet why this happened here. Um, what else do we have? The number of features, which may indicate uh, some sort of uh, completeness of data. Uh, again, in Germany and the Netherlands, we have very large numbers. <coughs> uh, but uh, as we can see here in Poland, there's a, a different image. We will have a look at this uh, later on. And uh, for instance, in uh, this is Hungary, right? Um, we have very low numbers of, uh, of features. So uh, one can guess that there's a lot of mapping still to be done. And the average version number, which also indicates some uh, user activity, um, is very interesting again, uh, since, well, the Netherlands is uh, completely different than uh, Germany. And again, we have some uh, areas in France which uh, stand out from the surroundings. And again, the, um, here we need some local knowledge to, uh, to find out what actually happened here. So let's have a look at some um, uh, single countries. Um, as I said before, the uh, Netherlands is a very interesting example. If you compare the number of features and the average number of contributions per user, which is uh, expectedly uh, very high, uh, with the average version number, which is low, uh, mostly between uh, 1 and 2, um, you can see that there's, uh, the data is complete, but uh, there's not a lot of editing going on there. So um, that's maybe related to uh, data imports. So and that's what uh, something we can show with uh, our approach. Yeah. Okay. Um, another very interesting example is Poland. Um, as we can see, this is the uh, total number of features displayed, and we identified some rectangular uh, patterns here in the north. Um, and if we have a closer look at one of these uh, patterns, for instance, <coughs> we can see and compare it to the, the visualization of uh, Mapnik, uh, we can see that here at this uh, border, the density of the street network is uh, very low uh, compared to the uh, rectangular pattern. So here again, we can identify areas which uh, uh, have an increased need for uh, uh, quality and uh, uh, control, and of course, some more uh, mapping activity. Mapping is needed uh, here. Another, yeah. Is this, uh, because there is a satellite imager available? Maybe we don't know. So uh, that's uh, uh, something I kind uh, of. Maybe that's uh, some satellite images or a data import for this uh, area. I don't know. So. Um, another interesting country is, uh, of course, Portugal, um, which is, in general, uh, there are very low version numbers in the countryside, except for the um, um, urban areas at the coast. But here we identified some uh, areas uh, at the, the border to Spain, which have very uh, high average version numbers. And uh, if we have a look at the, the images for the number of features, uh, it's, it depicts the same. Um, and we found out that these um, areas uh, matched areas of national parks or national preservation areas. So um, 
we don't know whether there's uh, some very active park rangers mapping here, or maybe it's uh, uh, some data import from the uh, German tourists, maybe. <laughs> or maybe it's a data import from the uh, uh, from some kind of national uh, uh, institution who provided data. We don't know, but uh, again, we can see that uh, uh, we have to uh, carefully look at the surrounding areas if there's maybe a lot of data missing. <coughs> Another example, um, Spain. Again, the average version number. Uh, this is an area south of Madrid, which is located here. Um, and we identified here some uh, linear patterns uh, which match uh, the streets, the tertiary streets in, in OpenStreetMap. And uh, well, it first uh, indicates that there's uh, a lot of uh, editing along the streets, but uh, also indicates that uh, uh, around these streets, or uh, uh, yeah, there's uh, again a need for. We have to look at if there is uh, something missing, which has to be mapped, or if there's we don't know. Maybe there's uh, uh, nothing available to map there. Uh, so um, there needs to be some local knowledge knowledge put in if, to find out if there's uh, increased need for quality control. And which is uh, also some uh, very interesting to look at since the, the Bing aerial maps have been conferred right to use for mapping um, is the area covered by buildings. So uh, we calculated for each of the cells the area which is uh, covered by buildings. And again, um, the Netherlands uh, are a very good mapped. I think um, Germany, we have uh, 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 a lot of buildings already mapped in the uh, urban areas, but if you compare it to, let's say, Poland or the uh, southeastern Europe, um, a lot of uh, mapping of buildings still has to be done. So that's it for some uh, preliminary results we found out yet. Um, oh, okay, there's something else. Um, that's something, uh, the idea of the, the OSM matrix originated from. Um, and it shows what we also can do with the with the kind of data. Uh, colleagues of mine, Julian Hagenau and Marco Helbig, uh, derived um, uh, the area of, of uh, urban areas, as a derived urban areas from OpenStreetMap data by uh, using um, uh, street density networks and uh, buildings and uh, uh, some machine learning approaches to um, find out if uh, order to to map urban areas which are not mapped in OpenStreetMap yet. So that's it, what we, we have done so far. Um, what else is there, <coughs> or what uh, have, have we planned? Uh, first, we want to include uh, temporal information. So for each uh, cell, we want to uh, show uh, how the single attributes evolve over time. And we have planned to uh, uh, do the calculation every two months and then uh, let's say, depict uh, how these uh, single values uh, uh, evolved. Okay, there's some, uh, there's the image missing, I don't know why. Um, okay, and another thing is um, usually uh, uh, I plan to, uh, or I include an image of an, a message which is shown in the client when you zoom out. So we have problems uh, when we uh, uh, display the, the uh, cells at, uh, large scales, um, so the, the surface side uh, easily gets stuck or hung, and so we cannot display everything uh, or an overview across whole Europe, so that's something we want to work on. And um, another interesting thing to uh, uh, research may be uh, the influence of uh, the cell size and the shape. So what happens if we uh, increase the cell size or uh, let's say, use these uh, rectangular cells, um, does it influence the, 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 the maps produced or uh, does, uh, are the results the same? So that's something we uh, may find out in the future. Well, that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have questions or suggestions, please go ahead. Thank you, Oliver. Other questions? We have time for some questions for Oliver. Yeah. Well, 
Will the service be available online? Uh, how long do you need for the calculation of Europe for one attribute? Sorry, and the church. And uh, doing these calculations, uh, this uh, took the weeks. I think uh, here we are about in two days uh, for, for this. That's what Julian told me, but I'm, uh, we, uh, we have to ask to, uh, Julian again. Uh, because um, we have done several uh, versions of this uh, with different implementations and different set of attributes. There were uh, very many attributes at the beginning, about 120, which we then found out that most of them are not really sensible and we thrown them away. And now we have uh, this uh, 40 and there were other things. So, um, uh, but, but if, if you only look on data that is more or less available, then you are in within days, I would say. Uh, but the idea is uh, to do a little bit more sophisticated things uh, that includes also geometrical calculations, uh, comparing different uh, objects to each other, and then you very soon into uh, weeks. And we also had different versions about the cell size already. Uh, if you've seen it, the worst version, the cell size was much smaller and uh, it's about 50 meters and now it's 250 meters in order to speed up a, bi a bit. So we are experimenting with that. Thank you. I'm sorry when you don't speak to the microphone, you will not be, your voice will not be on the video. Um, are there other questions? Maybe the questions come later and you can ask them at the coffee. So we can proceed to our next.